the beer that made Milwaukee famous presents The Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Good evening, this is Ronald Coleman. And Benita Coleman. Inviting you to join us again on the campus of Ivy College as the guest of our sponsors, the Brewers of Schlitz Beer. Tonight's program is dedicated to Dr. Horace Mann Bond. President of Lincoln University, Chester County, Pennsylvania. The taste of Schlitz. The taste so many people prefer has made Schlitz beer first in sales in the USA. If you like good beer, do as millions of people are doing all over the nation. Ask for Schlitz, the most popular beer in history. And now, the Halls of Ivy. Welcome again to Ivy, Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. When one thinks of a college president, it's apt to be in terms of mortarboard, academic gown, and a portentous, harried individual poring over lists of wealthy alumni for some untapped vein of golden endowments. This is a caricature, of course, but caricatures are merely distorted portraits. Without the distortion, at least one college president, William Todd Hunter Hall of Ivy, is a man in a business suit who's neither portentous nor harried, and he has friends and neighbors like everybody else. One of them is waiting for him now in his study at number one faculty row. And as he enters the front door, his wife, Victoria, says... Oh, Toddy, I'm so glad you're home. Thank you, darling. Your happiness at my return is most reassuring. I'd dislike it very much if you met me at the door and said, Oh, dear, you again. Back already? <laughs> oh, well, I'm not only glad because I'm always glad to see you again, but also because we have a visitor. Oh? Anyone who is likely to tax the presidential patients with some campus caper? No, no. This is someone you always enjoy talking to. It's little Sheila Quintana. Oh, Sheila. That's fine. Where is she? Well, she's in your study, sitting in your chair and at your desk. Drawing pictures on your best stationery with your best fountain pen. <laughs> well, well, my best stationery and my best fountain pen are none too good for Sheila Quinn Cannon. Yeah, I know, Toddy. And when you start visiting, whether you'll be ours, so first tell me, how was the board meeting? Oh, much as usual. It's getting so the other members consider themselves a gallery of happy spectators when Mr. Wellman and I get into our customary verbal head-on collisions. Uh, well, Mr. Wellman has an unfair advantage in a head-on collision. He has two heads. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he had seven heads, they'd do him no good against me. Uh, I've discovered a technique which has him completely baffled. It's a conversational gambit which I should hesitate to use against anyone else, but with Clarence, all's fair in love and board meeting. W what's the gambit? Silence. How do you use it? Well, when he finishes speaking for a moment, I simply smile politely and wait as though for him to continue. Mm. When the pause becomes unbearable, he turns red, starts talking again, and makes no sense whatsoever because he is babbling from pure embarrassment. Yeah. <laughs> that reminds me of that book by Stephen Potter called Gamesmanship. Oh, yes. Yeah. Or How to Win Games Without Actually Cheating. Mm. You should write one on Shut Upmanship. Or how to win an argument without opening the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's peculiar how deafening a sudden silence can be. Yeah, that awful conversational laundry shoot down which the whole party goes. Yeah. Well, it accounts for a great deal of brainless chatter. Oh, which reminds me, I must go and see my guest, whose chatter makes more sense than that of most people. Yeah. Come along, Vicky. You won't be embarrassed if I'm present when you talk to this other woman. Oh, not at all, darling. I love you both. Oh, well, good. Sheila, dear, our man has come home. Hello, Sheila. Hi, Dr. Hall. Hi, Mrs. Hall. Look at the picture I drew. Now, why, that, that's simply wonderful, Sheila. Yes. Isn't it, William? I've never seen anything quite like it. Personally, I never could draw horses. Me either. That's why it's a picture of a dog. <coughs> oh, yes, yes, a dog. Yes, it's a nice high dog. <laughs> Especially in front. <laughs> uh, are you going to be an artist when you grow up, Sheila? No, I'm going to be a doctor, or maybe a nurse. Mm. I think doctors and nurses are wonderful. Well, you ought to know, dear. You see enough of them. Hundreds of them, I bet. I guess maybe that's why I like you so much, Dr. Hall. You're a doctor, too. Well, not so 
not a medical doctor. I'm really just plain Mr. Hall, but, but people always call me doctor, and I'm so used to it, I don't bother to correct them anymore. How are all your family? Oh, fine, thank you. Except Terry. He went to the hospital yesterday. Oh, oh. heavens, really? I didn't what? know. Is it anything serious, uh, Sheila? Oh, no. He's just having his independence out. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But, you know, they, they can remove an independence very easily these days. He'll be up and about before you know it. How old is Terry now? He's ten, going on twelve. Ten going on twelve? What happened to eleven? <laughs> well, my daddy says he's growing so fast, he'll probably skip eleven. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dr. Hall, your fountain pen doesn't work very good anymore. The point got all spread out. See? Yes, I see. Yes, it'll be... Uh... It'll be twice as good as it was before. Now it has two points. I was kind of afraid for a while I'd busted it. Well, that pen wasn't really for writing with anyway, Sheila. It mostly you were just to look at. Well, I didn't even know it had ink in it. Oh, it had lots of ink in it. Too much, even. Some of it came out on the carpet. <laughs> I tried to wipe it off, but it got kind of smeared around more. Gee, I'm sorry, Mrs. Hall. Well, don't be, dear. That carpet needed cleaning anyway, and you just helped to bring it to mind. Well, thank you for reminding me. You're welcome, Mrs. Hall. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, how about some more cookies and another glass of milk? No, thank you. I had two glasses and about a zillion cookies, and I don't want to spoil my dinner. I guess I'd better go home now. And come back soon, won't you, Sheila? I like talking to you. By the way, uh, when did you say your brother was being operated on? This afternoon. Mother says we can go see him about Saturday. I gotta go to the hospital anyway and get my braces adjusted. Well, I'd love to go with you, if I may. Terence was teaching me how to make a kite, and I'm just about ready for my second lesson. And tell your father from me, Sheila, that, that I want to... There's the phone, Dr. Hall. Yeah, we know, dear, but I, uh, where is it? Well, it's on a long cord, Sheila, and sometimes we can't find it. Now, maybe... Oh, uh... I remember now. I put it in the desk drawer so I'd have more room. Here it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very good idea. I'm sorry I never thought of that myself. Excuse me, ladies. Certainly. Sure. Dr. Hall's residence. Uh, Professor Harmon. Oh, yes, Professor. How have you been? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, but isn't there anything we can do to lighten your schedule? I see. Well, it's only that I dislike your taking such a drastic step without exhausting every possibility. Why don't you... Why don't you come over and have a talk? Perhaps we can work out something. 4.30, that'll be fine. Goodbye, Professor. Now then, what were... Oh, yeah, yes, Sheila. Uh, Sheila, uh, will you let us know when you hear how T Terence is getting along? Okay, Dr. Hall. He said he ought to be out from the... Anas... The Anas... Anesthetic? Uh, sure. Right now, maybe. Um, uh, Sheila, if it's not asking too much, uh, could you come back and tell us about him? Oh, yes, I'd like to. Say about 4.30? I come over a lot oftener, but Daddy says you're a busy man and don't bother you. Yeah, it only bothers us when you stay away too long, Sheila. Oh, I like to come over here. You're always so nice. Even when I make a mistake, it turns out good. Like when I spilled ink on your carpet, and it reminded you to have it cleaned anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, Dr. Hall. Will you please hand me my crutches? Uh, here you are, Sheila. I'd offer to help you, but you always refuse me. And my feelings are so easily hurt. <laughs> uh, you just say that, I guess. <laughs> anyway, I like to walk by myself. And I almost never fall down anymore. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, it really is, Sheila. You know, you're getting to be the bounciest one of the block. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. O. <laughs> I only go next door, but it takes me a little while to get there. So I'd better get started, I guess. Bye, Dr. Hall. Goodbye, Sheila. Until 4.30. And thank you for fixing my fountain pen. Yeah, and for reminding me about the carpet. Oh, well, that's all right. I was glad to do it. <laughs> uh, she's really a terrific youngster, isn't she? Miss Galahad, in a four. Yes, it isn't the iron in her braces that keeps her going, to keep her going, it's the steel in her courage. It reminds me of one definition of the word handicap. An artificial disadvantage placed on a superior contender. Uh, but why did you ask her to come back? I well, mean, so specifically at 4.30. Uh, 
Oh, it's just an idea I had after talking to Professor Harmon. He wants to resign. Resign? Hmm. Why? I thought he was one of the best men on the faculty. Oh, he is. But it seems he can do more for the students than he can for himself. Oh, yeah, I know. He's a, uh, uh, what do you call a, a person who makes ten trips a day to the drugstore for pink pills. Pilgrim? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. You know, I, um, hypochondriac. Yeah, hypochondriac, yes. According to, the, according to the old definition, one who enjoys ill health. <laughs> yes, yes. But I still don't see what he's got to do with little Sheila's coming back at 4.30. Well, I'm not sure I do either. But you know how I like to set up personal situations and see what happens? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm just a drawing room dramatist uh, who is lucky to have a heroine like Sheila Quinn Cannon. You wouldn't believe what a guy could get into buying a three-cent stamp. Unless, of course, you knew Dal Warburton, our one-of-a-kind postmaster here at Ivy. I dropped into the post office quite innocent. Well, well, uh, Carpenter, <laughs> can I sell you something, or did you just drop in to model for one of our wanted posters? Oh, hello, Dal. Oh, I just want a three-cent stamp. So. Three-cent stamp, eh? Mm -hmm. uh, well, let me see now. We've got several varieties. Uh, got portraits, landscapes, great men, uh, several delightful issues commemorating great events. Uh, and, look, uh, look, Dal, I, I just want a three-cent stamp. I'm not fussy about what it looks like. Dear, dear, he isn't fussy. <laughs> Ken, I'm surprised at you. Where's your sense of proportion? Now, what if I went into a tavern and asked for a glass of beer, and the man says, what kind? And I says, oh, I'm not fussy. Well, yeah, that's different. You know, I talk about Schlitz beer. You know, I believe it's the greatest beer in the world. And you know perfectly well that Schlitz is America's best-liked beer. And yet you, uh, uh, you wouldn't really say you weren't fussy, would you, Dal? No, I don't know, Ken, I might. You see, I'm a little hurt. Now, you interrupted me before I'd finished my sales story on the line of stamps we carry here. Well, you can't be serious. A three-cent stamp, that's all I wanted. A measly little three-cent stamp. Well, I'll thank you not to run down my product. Oh, my. <laughs> now, you listen here. We put out stamps here that can't be matched any place in Ivy for the money. Now, you tell me that slits can't be uh, matched for taste. <laughs> what if I were to but say now, that... Uh, slits can't be matched. Slits has a wonderful, light, bright taste you just don't find in any other beer. A taste so great that millions of Americans have made slits beer their own personal beer. You see, Dal, the big difference between your product and mine is that mine can't be licked. Oh, uh, now, Ken, I've been patient about listening to your pitch. Now, may I finish mine? Oh, all right, Dal, go ahead. Well, I was merely going to say, Ken, that for three cents... I'd sell you the best three-cent stamp in the house, close the stamp window, <laughs> since it's almost six anyway, and then... Uh, yes, Al, and then? And then, Ken, I'd share with you a pair of bottles of the beer you love. Slits beer. <laughs> it's my favorite, too. Uh, uh, shall we? Well, we shall and will. Special delivery. <laughs> As we return to the halls of Ivy, we find Dr. and Mrs. Hall entertaining another visitor, Mr. Merriweather, member of the Board of Governors and a good friend. Mrs. Hall is saying... Now, please take off your coat and that glorious red scarf and sit down a while, Mr. Merriweather. It's a cold afternoon and we don't want our favorite board member catching pneumonia. Thanks, ma'am. I appreciate your solicitude, as I appreciate you in all other departments. <laughs> Dear boy. Uh, I was just walking around the campus, happy in being an overage graduate who can sleep until noon, and thought I'd drop in and see Prexy and his dream girl. Well, Prexy and his dream girl don't see you often enough, Charles. Do we, dream girl? No, Prexy, we don't. <laughs> have you been busy, Mr. Merriweather? No, ma'am, I have not. I'm that pathetic figure in American life, the retired businessman, who has no amusing vices, no talent for pure loafing, and who lives for golf in a climate where you can only play it seven months in the year. Which makes my business engagement this afternoon very urgent. Oh, are you starting on a new enterprise, Charles? Yes, yes. There's a new miniature golf course on the fifth floor of the Keeler building downtown. It's rumored to be tougher than Pebble Beach, 
and strong men are said to have come down in the elevator weeping. <laughs> this sounds perfectly fascinating, and there's no danger of sunstroke either. <laughs> well, let me know how you like it, won't you? Vicky and I may have a go at it ourselves. Ah, I'll give you a report. My tipsters tell me that on the seventh hole, you tee off from the top of an empty bottle. Oh, no! Yes, if you knock the bottle down, extra stroke. Then you have to shoot through the thumb of a catcher's mitt, carom the ball off the trigger of a music box, which plays, I'll be glad when you're dead, you rascal, you. <laughs> and drive past three hazards. What are they? A pool of glue, a hole in the floor that connects with the city sewer system, <laughs> and a Labrador retriever on a long leash who gets a hamburger for every golf ball he can grab. <laughs> My, uh, my informant may have exaggerated slightly, but it's bound to be more fun than sitting in my broker's office trying to find a bum stock for a tax loss. Yes. <laughs> Tell me, is there a 19th hole on this course, Mr. Merriweather? Ma'am, you have the instincts of a true golfer. That was my first question, too. Yes, there is. Just a mashy shot up the street. <laughs> don't... <laughs> don't let us detain you from this investigation, Charles. If you don't come back... Uh, we'll assume that you were mistaken for an extra-large hamburger by the Labrador Retriever. <laughs> well, just remember me as kindly old Charlie Merriweather and have slamming Sammy Sneed read the eulogy. Well, <laughs> let's hope you survive, Mr. Merriweather, so you and Mrs. Merriweather can have dinner with us tomorrow night. Yes. Most attractive offer I've had all week. What time? Oh, 7.30ish or quarter-ish to 8 or even 7-ish, 15. Name your own-ish. <laughs> uh, by the way, are you dieting, either of you? It seems nowadays that everybody is. And we wouldn't want to be lacking in culinary tact. After all, with territorial statehood in question... It would never do to serve baked Alaska to a southern senator. Uh, no, nor ask him to dance a hula afterwards. <laughs> no. Well, I'm not dieting, but did you ever know my wife when she wasn't? Or claim she wasn't? Well, I'm glad we found out. What can she eat? Oh, well, don't worry about it. There are three things a woman will make any excuse to get out of. A rainstorm, a tight girdle, and a diet. <laughs> well, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, Charles. Bye. <laughs> I do like Mr. Merriweather. He's so comfortable. I can't imagine him getting really perturbed about anything. Well, that's because you've never seen him take seven practice swings, test the wind with a wet finger, wait for a clear fairway, tell his caddy to keep an eye on the ball, and then flub his first tee shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's different. That's a reason. Uh, how does he react? Oh, it's rather frightening. Oh. Mm. He just smiles. A thin-lipped smile, like... Like Boris Karloff measuring out arsenic. <laughs> he throws his driver into the nearest shrubbery, runs over to a tree, and starts banging his head against the trunk. <laughs> then he sobs once or twice, comes back, borrows a brassy, shuts his eyes, and slams a screaming drive about 300 yards. <laughs> It's an emotional game, isn't it? I suppose all golfers would go insane if they didn't have to take such a long walk between the tea and the green. Well, I'll be glad when the weather opens up enough so we can play again. You don't mind playing golf with your own wife. Oh, oh. You are an exceptional man. With you, my darling, golf is simply a matter of getting my feet on the green grass, my head into the wind, and a long stroll with someone pleasant to talk to and be with. I love the sun, the air, the rolling hills, the gleam of water, and you beside me singing in the wilderness. Ah, wilderness were paradise now. <laughs> do you suppose... Do you suppose Omar was a golfer? Of course he was. A book of rules consulted neath the bow, a tangled ruff, a stymied ball. And thou beside me searching in the undergrowth. <laughs> Ah, let us tell the Greens Committee now. <laughs> but, but why do you keep looking at your watch? You can't play golf for another month at least. Yeah, I know, darling, but I'm, expe I'm expecting Professor Harmon, and here he is. Well, that's one thing about being the president, Toddy. People have to keep their appointments on time. Yes, it's one of the compensations of my job. As my father used to say, an appointment unkept is a promise broken. And I have all... Oh, good afternoon, Professor. Afternoon, Dr. Hall. Mrs. Hall. Hello, Professor Harmon. You're looking very well. I am? Well, that shows you how deceitful I must be. Because I don't feel well at all. Oh. Anything specific, Professor? 
Or just things in general? Oh, I don't know, frankly. But I'm fed up with everything. I haven't got any particular aches or pains, but I just feel like throwing everything aside and running away. Well, you can buy a ticket to anywhere in the world, but you always pay excess for your mental luggage. <laughs> but um, why, why not sit down and let's see what can be done about your resignation? The way I feel about it, there's only one thing to do, and that's to resign. Why don't you take that chair, Professor Hartman? Yeah, that's our, that's our psychological seat, <laughs> Professor. It's deep enough so the visitor can't get up suddenly and run out, <laughs> and uh, uh, low enough so that its occupant must look up slightly to the president. Yes. And it's paid for, which gives the president and his wife a pleasant feeling of security. <laughs> but uh, I thought all psychologists made the patient face the light while they kept their own faces in the shadow. Ah, that's a strategy employed only by amateur psychologists. It is not the play of emotions on the visitor's face which guide my interviews. It's the expression which I permit him to see on my face. So, thus forewarned, uh, tell me your troubles. My husband intensely dislikes the idea of losing your services, Professor. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you. But I, I can't stay at the college. I, I think it would kill me. Is it that bad? Mm, it probably sounds a little dramatic to you, but I'm not dramatizing myself. I'm, I'm headed for a crack-up. I don't want to end up in the hospital. The pressure is too great by my, my classes. Working on two books for fall publication... Meetings for this and that, and committees. Oh, it shouldn't be difficult to get you off some of the committees and possibly relieve the pressure in other directions also. Mr. Merriweather's definition of a committee would make anyone want to get off them. He says a committee is a group of the unfit appointed by the unwilling to undertake the unnecessary. <laughs> oh, it isn't just the committees or any one thing. It's, it's everything. The everlasting, unremitting pressure. I, I can't take it. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I'm jittery and jumpy. I, 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 I just got to get away and get, get hold of myself. Have you, have you considered spending a few days in the clinic for a physical checkup? Oh, I've done all that. The doctors find nothing. But I know there's something. Excuse me, will you? Uh, Dr. Hall's residence. Yes, operator, please do. It's in Bloomington, Indiana. Indiana, you. And who is who at old I.U.? <laughs> it's probably Professor Marcelli of the music department. I'm sorry, Professor Harmon. It'll, it'll be ju just... Uh, ju Hello? Hello? Rico? Ah, come sta, amico mio. Bene, bene. Ha <laughs> of course I'm ready. Been ready for weeks. All right, here it is. Uh, rook to the knight's fourth and mate in three moves. Ha-ha. <laughs> oh, you don't think so? <laughs> well, take your time, old man. Chess has been played for centuries. Why should we hurry it? How's the concerto coming along? Oh, it's too bad. Well, it's your move now, Rico. Good luck. Arrivederci. Hmm. I take it the concerto isn't doing too well. Ah, uh, Professor Marcelli's concerto is a sometimes thing. He alternates between being an accomplished composer and a frantic chess player. <laughs> Uh, this is one of his frantic periods. Oh. But I'm sorry we were interrupted, Professor Harmon. Go on, please. Well, there isn't any more. I, I simply want to resign. I know I have a contract, but I hope you'll give me permission to cancel it. Well, if you assure us that you can work out no alternative, I, I will see that your contract is cancelled. Uh, may we ask your plans if you do resign, Professor? I haven't made any of this at all. I'll go away somewhere and take a long rest. I... I'm just giving up. Um, see, see, who's at the door, Victoria, do you mind? Yes, certainly. Hello, Paul. Hello, Sheila. Ah, Sheila, come in, come in. That's right, now, here. Sit right here. Yes, sit. Let me take your crutch. Thank you, Miss Paul. I just wanted to tell you about Terry. The doctor says he's fine. Oh, that's splendid, Sheila. We're delighted to hear it. I'm going to go see him Saturday. Isn't that wonderful? Indeed it is. And thank you for coming over to tell us, dear. Uh, oh, but you two haven't met. Uh, Professor Harmon, this is our next-door neighbor, Sheila Quinn Cannon, a young lady whom I admire immensely. How do you do? Well, how do you do, Sheila? Is Professor Quinn Cannon your father? Yes, he is. Do you know him? Oh, yes, I do. He's a wonderful man. I know it. Do you know Terry? Terry? Yes, Terrence Quinn Cannon, uh, uh, Sheila's brother. He's in the hospital. They took out his independence. I'm going to go see him Saturday on account of they're going to adjust my braces anyway. Is that uh, much of a job, Sheila? 
Oh, no. It just takes a little while. My father says that not so long ago, when a little girl needed braces, there were many good ones. Now they make dandy ones. I guess I'm just lucky. Lucky? Uh, Sheila wants to be a doctor when she grows up. Don't you, Sheila? Sure. Or maybe a nurse. But maybe a doctor would be best. Because if my legs don't get better, I can sit at a desk and help people. Just us have to hurry around and lift things. Well, I'm sure you'd make a very good doctor. Well, I guess I'd better go now. It's a wonderful day out. I'm going to sit on the porch and watch the kids play. Can I please have my crutches, Miss Hall? Here you are. I'll walk to the door with you. Don't bother, Miss Hall. I like to do it all by myself. Remember... And the bouncy is running the block. <laughs> Bye, Dr. Hall. Bye, Professor. Go Bye. Bye. Now then, Professor Harmon, back to your problem. You were saying... Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman, has been presented by Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. The taste of Schlitz, the taste so many people prefer, has made Schlitz beer first in sales in the USA. Why don't you two enjoy the most popular beer in history? Next time, every time, ask for Schlitz beer. Now, here again are Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Thank you, Ken. Ladies and gentlemen, little Sheila Quincannon is your neighbor, too. In every neighborhood, in every community, there are children who need your help. The sale of Easter seals by the Society for Crippled Children and Adults is dedicated to this purpose. Please support this wonderful work with your purchase of Easter seals, or send a donation direct to Crippled Children Care as your local post office. Send as much as you can, but even a small donation will seem large to some youngster who has nowhere else to look for help and comfort. It's wonderful when all we tall ones can bend and lend our strength to small ones. Good night, everybody. Good night from all of us. And from our sponsor, the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and its thousands of friendly dealers throughout the nation. Good night. <laughs> We'll be seeing you next week at this same time at the Halls of Ivy starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Mr. Merriweather is played by Gail Gordon. Sheila was Mary McGovern and Professor Harmon was John Brown. Tonight's script was written by Don Quinn. Music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. The Halls of Ivy was created by Don Quinn, directed by Milton Merlin, and presented by the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who invites you to enjoy on television... The Schlitz Playhouse of Stars with Helen Hayes, Margaret Sullivan, Walter Hampton, and more of the brightest names of Hollywood and Broadway. See your newspaper for Time and Channel. Ken Carpenter speaking. Oh, we love the Hall of Ivy Just for laughs, join in the fun with the great Gildersleeve on NBC.